Redskins news, Colt McCoy is still in crutches or had another procedure. He's in crutches, and some of the Redskins fan base is freaking out because the last we heard, you know, they decided not to go with Colt, but he was supposedly running around at the end of the last season trying to get back on the field. Right, and he was. Um, that's that's accurate because we saw him. Like we talked to him on locker cleanout day, right. and he was walking. He was. He didn't have any boot on, no brace, nothing. He was walking, and you know, basically said like, if I needed to play here pretty soon, I could have. And uh, like some of this, I know for a fact. Some of this is more educated guess and things like that. So. Um, what I think happened is they did the bare minimum they could to try to get him back on the field. Like, let's just get what we need to do in case we make the playoffs. We want him to be our guy. And I know everyone wants to laugh at that and be dismissive, but that's how they were thinking internally, even if externally we're going, you guys aren't making the playoffs. So they were able to clean up everything or clean up enough to get him to the point that he was at in January when we saw him off crutches, not in a boot, not anything, walking around, looked fine, was fine. But then for, you know, I don't know exactly why the timeline would be that he just had this procedure now. Um, You know, you go in and you either clean up or fix or, you know, kind of finish the job. And so that's, I think, what's happening now. And then he's on the boot and crutches in the immediate aftermath of the surgery, but maybe it's only for a couple of days. I mean, he literally just had this procedure a couple of days ago per what Jay told us in the lobby of the hotel the other day so or yesterday. So it's something where, yes, it's like, oh, my God, Colts on crutches. They now have two quarterbacks on crutches and one that's not. That's not good. But he might be off crutches by the end of the week and out of a boot and everything by you know the end of next week, and he's going to be ready to go for OTAs. I don't know exactly the timeline of when he'll be off this stuff, but per Jay yesterday, he'll be ready for OTAs. And this was a, a minor cleanup procedure and just got to be, you know, overly cautious in the aftermath. Whether that's true or not, I mean, all I can do is, is report what I'm told, and that's what I was told. Craig, I know that most teams don't want to waste a third roster spot on a third-string quarterback. They have to going into 2019 the way that disaster unfolded at the quarterback spot last year. What do you think are the percentage chances that they don't have three quarterbacks on the roster to start the season? I'll go like 30%. Maybe that's a little high, but I, I think that if they don't, they'll have someone on the practice squad. Like they're going to have three quarterbacks in the building. They do not want to, and ideally that's how they've always done it. Um, they just haven't, you know, they didn't last year. They had so many other guys in and out and with the roster and just last year was a weird year, obviously for a million reasons, injury wise and roster construction wise, but whether it's, I think I think they wind up drafting. They're going to draft someone, and if that player is and you know not a seventh rounder who they can send through waivers, then that guy's going to be on the roster. And then you have Colt, and you have Case, etc. Um, I think there's also a chance that you you know if you like trade for Rosen or you wind up taking someone in the first round or whatever, could you see them move on from Keenum or Colt and either cut or trade one of those guys if someone else has a quarterback need? and they can get a little bit of value back. You could see that as a potential possibility that will work into the, the small percentage. But I think ultimately Colt and Case are both here, and then a rookie, uh, which J.B. Finley has dubbed QBX, which I like. Um, a, a quarterback on a rookie contract will be here, and all three of those will be on the roster more than likely uh, come week one. As a sports radio host here in D.C., I would love for the Skins to pull off a trade for Rosen because it would create a lot of questions and, and maybe some excitement for some for some Skins fans. But there's 0% chance they're going to do it. That's the way I feel. Why do you say that? I don't know. That's just the way I feel. That's just too, <laughs> too, too good to be true. I don't know. I, for me. I, I will say, like, it does have a too good to be true feel. Very path forward. That seems like hey, this is a good quarterback path to be on. Mm -hmm. And Rosen would be such a lifeline between the contract, you know, the fact that some people think he could be great um, despite what, you know, we saw last year. Like, he would be just – he's the best option they have. And I feel pretty comfortable saying that outside of them somehow landing Kyler Murray without giving up immense amounts of draft picks and assets that Mm -hmm. they don't they can't afford to give up and that's just not going to happen i think murray to arizona is going to happen if not it's going to take a ton to go get him but i don't love any of these other first round quarterbacks like i'm i'm really not that high on any of the quarterbacks in this draft 
I don't think they're particularly high on any of these quarterbacks. Like, I don't think there's one, unless they're being super coy about, oh, man, we let's not tell anyone we love Daniel Jones or Drew Locke, but uh, right. we're just going to lay in the weeds and take him at 15. Like, I would be fairly surprised if they wind up taking a quarterback at 15 at this point. So, ultimately, like, they don't have a, good, a very good path forward. Mm-hmm. And Rosen represents a path forward. And even with Keenum and Colt, like, do I think they can win them if everybody were to stay healthy and they do some smart things in the draft and a couple guys play up to their potential? Could they be competitive for a playoff spot with those guys? Yeah, they could, but like your ceiling's still pretty low and you don't have a path forward. Rosen represents something completely different. So I would do it if I were them. Um, I don't know that I'd give up 15, but I would think about you know. But I also don't know with some of the other teams that are floating out there, like New York now with two first-round picks, for instance, that might need a quarterback or want to, to get into the Josh Rosen sweepstakes. I don't know if the Skins are going to have the capital uh, to pull it off or the desire to spend the capital to pull it off. Hey, real quick, you know who John Breach is? I do not. John Breach writes for CBS Sports, and he ranked okay. he ranked all the teams and how they've fared. So now, by comparison, the, the New York Giants are ranked 32 on his list, um, and the Cleveland Browns are ranked 1. Okay, He's got the Skins ranked 30th. Out of 32, he said that they overpaid for Landon Collins. Um, they still don't have a, a clear path, like you said, at quarterback. He said they gave a, uh, Peterson too much, who's 34. Eric Flowers, $4 million, didn't make sense. And then he says at the end, they also have apparently not been filling in their head coach about their free agency plans. Any thoughts on any of that? That's someone who needs to read more reporting on the, <laughs> the coaching thing. Oh. Like, it, just, it just drives me nuts with that. Like, it's it's yes, Jay, Jay's not maybe getting everything he wants, but he knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. It, he's in the meetings. He's changing the board. Like I've talked to people who are in the meetings with him. He, that, that part of it is just, and look, I mean, I know EB, obviously you were told what you were told. I don't mean that like a shot at you. We all say he's not we, here. He's not here right say. now. Okay. Right. Um, so like he, and I, well, then I don't mean to like take shots at EB when he's not there, but ultimately like we, we checked in after we found EB said what he said. And like, we found out that while, well, yeah, Jay is super frustrated. He knows what's going on. And then part of it's just like the, could he have found out from a media member that they signed Landon Collins? Yes, but it wasn't a surprise to him that they signed Landon Collins. And that's probably pretty typical. Like Jay's got other stuff. He's not the one working on the contract. So like that part of it, whatever. Um, if you're going to knock them for that, then like I would say do better in your article. Um, but the other parts of it, I think are interesting. The flowers thing, you're taking a flyer, but that's kind of an expensive flyer, depending on on how much he winds up earning. If he winds up earning 4 million, like you're going to tell me you couldn't gotten Eric flowers for the minimum. That dude's been on a a couple of teams and hasn't ever been good. Um, that, that seems like an overpay, but ultimately you take a a shot on a 24 year old who was a top 10 draft pick and has a lot of talent. Adrian Peterson, um, they needed him back um, for a lot of reasons, and I don't think they really overpaid that much for him. Mm-hmm. And the Landon Collins thing, the way the contract is structured, I don't think that's an overpay either. I think they were really smart about that in a position of need and a continual um, insertion of the Alabama culture into Ashburn. Uh, and Landon Collins is the perfect guy to help that process continue. So um, I like what they've done now, but, but that said, like, I don't know what they were supposed to do at quarterback. I, I think the Case Keenum thing was smart because there's not a lot of better options out there. Um, so it's just, unfortunately for them, a lot of their biggest glaring needs didn't match the market safety. It did, but like they need a wide receiver and a quarterback and they're not like they're terrible wide receiver and quarterback market. So if they do those things right in the draft, like I actually think they've played this pretty well. Also, given the fact that they have a very limited hand because Alex Smith is essentially a $20 million cap penalty.